Uh, if you followed along with the last upload on this channel, you are well aware of this Trifox SDY 20. So I think as expected at the end of that video in the comments, people were kind of asking for the impressions, the thoughts, all that good stuff about what it is that I've put together. We happened to go ride Wentworth Valley, our kind of uh, close-ish local bike park. I brought this with me and while I was riding, I uh, said some of my impressions as I rode up the hill and then just have some memories of impressions of this frame set, these handlebars that I will here now share for you to, I don't know, make a decision on whether or not you want to get this bike. And maybe one more beneficial piece of knowledge to have before you watch me talk about a bike is for the last three years, I've been riding this really clapped out felt compulsion frame that has super, super old geometry. What I've been riding the most lately while riding mountain bikes is this super modified Breezer Thunder steel hardtail. And my new obsession, which will eventually tank this channel, uh, my dirt jumper. I am a BMXer. I've always BMXed, um, having gotten more into mountain biking. I'm riding a dirt jumper, and I ride a dirt jumper three, four times a week easily. I used to race cross country, and a cross country bike used to be my only mountain bike. It was all I knew. That out of the way, let's talk to Wentworth Riding, Eric, on this thing when it comes to category one. Climbing. Holy, it is so different to be on a bike that actually climbs. I've been spending so much time on my old clapped out felt, played around on that Santa Cruz in Colorado, the breezer. Like, yeah, the breezer is cool, no doubt but it is not as good at climbing as this. Oh my gosh. It is the third time coming up this climb and it's actually enjoyable. Like I almost get a little bit upset when I read things and like reviews about bigger bikes and the fact that they're like good climbers. And then you compare what it's like to actually climb on a, a light, stiff, hardtail. And there is no, like for anyone to say anything climbs decent in comparison to this. I would happily marathon laps of this all day and probably not really get too sore or tired. That is the difference. I would not be able to do that on the breezer. I think it would well and truly be the dream to have something that climbs like this and descends like what Dan is climbing right now. He's riding his privateer. Generally, when we're both riding like similar bikes, we're right near each other but I just keep dropping them. And it's not even like I'm trying that hard. It is kind of the bike. And it's definitely not even specifically this bike. I think any stiff light hardtail with 29 inch wheels would uh, have this effect. There's not really any doubt in my mind. So I think everything I said while going up that climb numerous, numerous times, hitting the same points constantly um, comes as really no surprise at all, especially because I've been riding heavier bikes with slacker head tube angles, uh, less stiff bikes, and I'm just kind of getting used to that like meandering, kind of terrible feeling, unsniper-like climbing characteristics. Like I'm annoyed that it actually is better. Um, yeah, I just, I thought for the longest time that it was like, okay, my fitness is gone, but whatever. Like, I'm not gonna do anything about it. I'm still having a great time. Turns out that the bike does make a huge difference. So we're going from this chapter to, oh, this chapter. I have been enjoying the descents, but we've been picking the like jankier ones, which, you know, obviously carbon hardtail Wheels kind of bouncing around a little bit. I'm not able to keep up with Dan or Robbie. I think Dan and I, if you can see Dan, and he's moseying his way up, trundling along. We're gonna go down the flow trail and I'm interested to see if I can like 
pulled Dan's wheel because on the other stuff I couldn't, on the flow trail I just might be able to. What I've been doing for the descents is just like taking my multi-tool, loosening this and dropping it as low as it'll go. It's a very manual dropper post, but it does seem to be working. There he is, champion Dan. Kind of interested to see if I can hold on or if I'm delusional. I'm sure you can. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my gosh! So much thing! Oh, I never make that jump. Or this one. Alright, alright, alright. Hello. Get dropped. Get dropped. Dropped me a little. There's nothing I can really do about it. I was slowing down too. <sighs> yeah, the rear wheel's kind of skidding around. Well, you don't really have a whole lot to. There's nothing to, yeah. <laughs> Still fun though. Yeah. So I think again, it kind of comes as no surprise that on each occasion that I chased some of my friends on more capable descending bikes, they eventually dropped, not even eventually, like almost immediately dropped me as we go down certainly the chunkier stuff, but then Dan, chasing Dan down the flow trail, he just slowly, in a linear fashion, pulled away from me. Like, he, if we didn't stop, I just would not have seen him, and, I, and he'd be gone. That is not what happens when I ride the Breezer. I can usually keep up, I can be on his wheel. I think a big part of that, looking at the geometries between, say, my Breezer and this Trifox, the biggest difference, of course, this is a size large and my breezer is a medium so there's that to take into account but the seat tube length of the trifox is about two inches taller than what's on the breezer so it gives me on the breezer a lot more room to move your knees where you want to be and just throw that bike around also the stock head tube angle on the breezer is about one and a little bit degrees more slack than what's on the Trifox. The Trifox head tube angle being 68.5 degrees, where the breezer in stock form is 67.7 degrees. Now, I also have a slightly longer fork than what comes stock, so it's even more so, I just don't know what the angle actually is. But the breezer in every way is what I'm more used to and gives me more confidence as I go into corners, like making mistakes going into corners, I feel like I can throw it into it a little harder where with the Trifox, if I'm just not on point, like if I get it wrong, I tend to just like bring the bike up straight, hit the brakes as hard as possible, almost come to a complete stop and then go around a berm. Uh, certainly not conducive to any sort of fast descending times, but um, I, do, I, I do think that it's something I could probably get used to. Uh, I used to be used to it in the past when I used to only ride cross-country bikes. Um, I think that just comes with spending more time on a particular geometry over another. The bikes do indeed ride different. During the descents, I think there's also something to be said about uh, the lightness that is the Trifox, the light and stiffness that is the Trifox. A lot of it really came up into my feet through my legs because of the stiffness of the chain stay, the stiffness of the seat stays. It, like your legs really do take 
all of the bounces and the punishment you gotta like really push down on the bike to get that traction as you go through everything it's still quick it's really quick feeling i will say that but near the end of our ride on, on that day i could i was like okay this bike has a longer chainstay but it's also much much heavier i'm not sure by how much but it probably it feels like five pounds and that extra weight actually it does feel like it helps get around those brake bumps and in, in corners and uh it just you feel a lot more fresh from the descent it's just you feel so dead after the climb because you've lugged this up with its slow meandering head tube angle where this up the climb you're like rip roaring ready to go down the descent so again another trade-off um depends on kind of like what you're at I wouldn't necessarily say one is better than the other. They are different, therefore different things. Um, but I will say if I was going to do a mountain bike marathon race and it was going to be on those trails, um, I would pick the TriFox every single day of the week and uh, take that penalty in the descents, that, that little bit more twitchiness of the descending and, and whatnot and then probably get used to it and keep riding faster over the breezer always every single time now because i was with who i was with on the bikes they are with and what i've been doing riding riding dirt jumpers so much and riding the like we're big bike park dudes now mountain bike bros uh the next chapter here jumping Amazing what you can do with an excavator instead of just a shovel. Um, I did get over every single feature there. Smooth, happy, laughing, having a good time the entire, we did the jump line three or four times. We just kept hiking it because it is so good. You know, it made it over them. Like, honestly, it's more the fact that the trails built really well and less so the fact that like, this bike jumps pretty. Now there's one more comment that I say to Dan as we're rolling out of there, we're done for the day, that goes a little like this. I'm pretty sure these bars are like kind of flexy and that's why they're so comfy. Cause my wrists like normally, even with so much suspension and even a, like a better fork, my wrists are like, ugh. I've not ridden with a carbon bar before. I thought I'd be afraid of it. It is not something I thought of. The second I clipped in and started climbing, I did not think of the fact that I was riding a carbon bar from a Chinese-based company, not once. There was never a moment that I could actually feel any flex. There was no noises, there was no nothing. Um, and at the end of the ride, instead of having that like really annoying, like kind of numb fingers, like, my arms have never felt that fresh at the end of a ride. And I don't, like, is that a characteristic of carbon bars? Do carbon bars help keep fatigue from coming into your forearms and everything and allow you to ride longer? That was just kind of my experience. Uh, maybe someone in the comments, you can offer some sort of insight into that so that I can understand what I'm talking about in any way, shape or form when I do a review again and three years. So yeah, that's where I'll end it. Uh, if you're considering one of these, I, you know, for the price, I wouldn't say that you're gonna be at all upset about uh, what you get, how it performs. There's no real surprises in the way it performs. It did exactly what I thought it would do. And uh, yeah, I'll certainly spend a little more time on it. Maybe I'll try a different set of wheels on it and uh, play with it a little more until the plans I have with it, which, you know, in the next month or so, uh, should come to fruition.
All right. Thanks for uh, watching a guy who doesn't really know how to review stuff. Review stuff. All right.